And, Mike, as we take a look at Breon Rush, point guard from Memphis here at the Summer League, we bring you in. You are the guy. You're the starting point guard for the big team, for the varsity team of the Memphis Grizzlies. And uh, Breon throws it away there. We are 3-3, 14-point lead for the Grizzlies. Uh, we welcome you in here, Mike. Uh, it, it, it's fun to have you on the broadcast, uh, and, and mo most importantly, it was really fun to see your game develop and flourish in the second half of last year when Coach Lionel Hollins uh, really put the reins of the offense in your hands. Uh, you, you, I, I would guess, owe a great uh, debt of gratitude to Lionel for doing that uh, and really triggering your career. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, I think it, you know, it was a blessing uh, that he came in and, and took over the way that he did. And, and, you know, he changed our team, I think. We played a lot better basketball, not only for myself, but uh, I think a lot of guys really stepped up under his system. So, um, you know, I think he, he just you know, made me more comfortable in the league and made me understand what I can do uh, on the court. So, I mean, it's, it's been a blessing. I'm just trying to work harder and harder every day and to continue to my development. Now, now Mike, you, uh, it's always exciting. Being in the NBA is exciting in and of itself. You know, playing with guys like O.J. Mayo and Mark Gasol and Rudy Gay is exciting. But when you add Hashim Fabian, when you add Zach Randolph, it's got to be really exciting to know that you guys have a potential to not just be a solid NBA this team this year, but you guys have potential to be a playoff team after a dismal 23-win season last year. Oh, yeah. I think uh, everybody's starting to notice. We made a lot of, a lot of good moves this offseason, a lot of good picks in the draft, um, a lot of guys in free agency and trades. And uh, I think uh, with the young core that we have, it's going to it's going to mesh very well. And hopefully, um, you know, as much as much as uh, you know, talent that we have, we can all put it together, come together, and try to you know make this a turnaround season for us. Mike, you got a lot of mouths to feed. You got Zach 2010 down low. Uh, you got OJ Mayo. You got Rudy Gay. Uh, the the you know I. Are they lobbying you right now? You know, I need my touches. I, I you know, I need my points. What, what, how, how are you going to distribute that? How are you going to make everybody happy? Man, you know, I have no idea right now. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a tough question. Those guys, uh, I know they love to have the basketball in their hand, but, I mean, uh, they're great guys. So I'm, I'm lo really looking forward to playing with all of them at the same time and, uh, you know, seeing how that works out. Well, I, I think the key for you becomes tempo. Push, push, push. Okay. You know, the more times you can have it on the right. your end of the court, the more chances you got for more people to have a shot. But, you know, you look at Rudy Gay, you look at uh, at O.J. Mayo, and, you know, Rudy never had never really lost. You guys have never lost many games in your college careers. So it's got to be unsettling for you guys to fight, you know, to go through a 23-loss season or 24-win season. But it sets you up to say, I don't want to do this again. And maybe Rudy Gay comes to you and says, hey, if Zach needs more shots, get him more shots. And O.J. says, if Rudy needs more shots, get him more shots. Because – it takes a team to win, and I think you guys understand that. And Lionel Hollins is only going to put up with so much before you, oh, yeah. you know, you know, before he puts his thumb down and says, "Hey, this is the way we're going to do it. Do it right, or don't do it at all." Oh yeah, exactly, exactly. He's he's that kind of a coach, and uh, you know, I think a lot of us are very, very tired of losing right now. We're very tired of having the kind of seasons that we've had, uh, knowing the kind of backgrounds we came from, and. Uh, I think this summer we've, we've definitely made a, a point to, to be around each other a lot, work out work out a lot together, and make sure that everybody's getting better and uh, everybody's focused because uh, you know our, our season starts you know this summer right now. So um, hopefully we can you know keep this up and uh, come focused, ready to go in training camp and have a great year this year. Mike, we're in a scouting environment here at the summer league. This is scouting paradise, basically seeing these young guys and and you know sort of fringy NBA guys, you know, determining do they have it, do they not have it. Uh, when you came out of college, the knock on you was the jump shot. Uh, and there were some who thought that you were were not a good pick, that you were taken too highly by the Memphis Grizzlies uh, because you lacked that jump shot. And they questioned your ability to acquire that jump shot. I thought those people were insane. Uh, there, there were people that said the same thing about LeBron James. Uh, there were people that said the same thing about Tony Parker. We know he is money from 18 to 19 feet right now. Last year, uh, I, I, what were you, 42, 40% 40 or yeah. something from three uh, in what, your second year in the league? Yeah. yeah. All right, so you basically uh, snapped your finger and, and turned on the J. And I know it took a lot of work and coaching and all that kind of stuff, but it just bothers me. That, that players like you, like T.J. Ford came out, labeled, didn't have a jump shot. Well, he's making J's now. So what are your what are your thoughts on that? What do you say to those naysayers? You know, that's that's, that's a tough thing. I mean, that's, that's all people's opinions. I think uh, a lot of these guys out here who are labeled non-jump shooters or can't dribble, 
Um, I think it's just the fact of them not going out there and doing it, not having the confidence in themselves to do it, or just maybe listening to too many of the naysayers and, and, and not believing in themselves. And, um, I think you know, that was a big case for me. Once I figured out, I knew I had a good form, I knew I had a good shot. Um, you know, once I started working on it even more, it really helped out my you know, confidence and my ability to just be able to knock down shots. And uh, I think that was a big difference for me. Did you have that form coming in, or did the coaches help you acquire that form while with Memphis? Um, I, had, I had the form coming in, um, but uh, I think they really, they really helped me tie up, tie up a lot of loose ends I had with my jump shot. And, um, I think it was just a work ethic more than anything. They, they had me doing a lot of, a lot of work uh, on my jump shot, a lot of work on my form, and, and keeping it consistent. And that, that was the biggest key for me is just keeping a consistent jump shot. And, um, I think I've done that, and, and hopefully I can keep, can keep improving on that. Now, uh, you know, one of my favorite guys in the NBA, one of my favorite teammates of all times, uh, Damon Stoudemire. He was a teammate, and then he became a coach. And even when we were back in Portland, and this is 1999, anybody who knew him knew at some point he was going to be on the sideline or uh, in a front office. How has he helped you in terms of making the adjustment in, in a very short amount of time? Oh, he's helped me a whole lot. I mean, Damon's, uh he's probably worked with me more one-on-one -on -one than anybody uh, else on the, on the coaching staff. He's he's a guy I look, look up to. Uh, not only as a, you know, he's my teammate for for a half a year, so um, it's good to see him as a coach. He, he has a lot of good advice with the way that you know, his career has went and, and things that he's done. And uh, I think he's really helped me become a better point guard and a, and a better individual as a whole. How you like in Memphis? I'm loving Memphis right now. It's too hot for me to be down there right now. It's almost like Vegas. But, uh, it's humid. Oh, yeah, it's humid. It's, it's more humid than Vegas. But, I mean, it's, it's a you know, great city, a lot of good food, so having a good time there. Now, have you found any of the, the, the backdoor blues spots yet? <laughs> Now, I know, I mean, your dad is closer to my age, so I know he probably has been to a couple of those undercover, nobody really knows what's up. Blues <laughs> those joints. are my kind of places, Exactly, man. the hole-in-the-wall joint that uh, nobody really goes to, that kind of smoky, a little grimy. But, uh, you know, Memphis is a great city. I, I, I'm from the South, so I absolutely love Memphis. Oh, yeah. Uh, I haven't found the, the blues areas yet. You know, I, I haven't been searching for you that. You might not before. be old enough to listen to the blues yeah, yet, yeah. Mike. He's still, he's still on the young side. I forgot. This is, this is, I grew up in the blues era. Right? With B.B. King and, and whatnot. With, right, with right. Muddy Waters. Hey, man, when, you, when you're taking high in the lottery, there's no blues going on, right? There's no blues, blues is over. Yeah, man. Exactly. Mike, good stuff, man. We appreciate you joining us here. 